Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover how to perform ETL using AWS Lambda with Python. In the previous session we covered Python shell in AWS Glue. We will utilize the same script and make it compatible with AWS Lambda and install the necessary libraries, create environment variables and set up the Lambda environment and then execute the ETL code. AWS Lambda is an event-driven serverless computing platform provided by Amazon as part of AWS services. It is a computing service that runs code in response to events and automatically manages the computing resources required by the code. AWS Lambda helps you focus on the core product and the business logic instead of managing the operating system. The term serverless is a misnomer. Lambda behind the scene provision resources, meaning servers from the cloud provider, in this case AWS. It scales the RAM and CPU and other resources as needed. AWS takes care of the servers. They maintain them in optimal condition. That way we can focus on writing code and providing value to business without worrying about provisioning underlying resources. And all the developers have to do is to bring their code to AWS and deploy it. Okay, enough talk. Let's get into writing code. We will write a Lambda function using Python to read data from S3 and load it to Redshift. First step, we will create a zip file containing the required libraries. Usually we import our libraries such as pandas, psychopg2 to manipulate the data and save it to a database. Since we don't know which server our code will run on, we need to make sure we provide the required libraries to our function. So let's go ahead and create a zip file with the libraries. I've created a new folder called Python and it is open in the command prompt. We will install the Python libraries in this folder. So in the terminal, we can issue a pip install command with few additional parameters. We set the platform to Linux 86 and 64 and only binary to all Psycho PG2 binaries and the target location is the current folder. Once we hit enter, this will begin the installation of Psycho PG2 libraries in this folder. Once complete, we see a new folder inside this folder and we can see the Psycho PG2 binaries installed here. Similarly, we can install pandas if we need it in our script. We will issue another pip install command with additional arguments and install pandas libraries. Once complete, we see pandas and its related libraries installed in the directory. Let's go ahead and create a zip file of this directory. We can right click on it and add it to an archive. I will select the zip option and click OK. I am using WinRAR, but you can use any tool that allows you to zip a folder. Once this process is complete, we have a zip file with our required libraries. Let's head to AWS and launch Lambda service. First, we will create a layer. So we select layers from the left menu and click on create layer button on the top right. We need to provide a name and a description for this layer and let's click upload and select our zip file. Under architecture, we will select x86 underscore 64. And for compatible runtime, we can select up to 15, but I will select the latest three. Once we are done, we can click the create button to create this layer. On the following screen, we see a success message with the options that we have selected for this layer. Let's head back to the layer screen and we will need to refresh the tab to see the new layer. Now we can write our Lambda function that will utilize this layer. So under functions, we will create a new function and we will author from scratch. Let's provide a name for this function and under runtime, let's search and select Python 3.9. The architecture option is fine, so we can leave it as is. And let's, create, and let's click the Create button. This brings us to the configuration page where we can attach the layer to this function. So let's scroll down to the Layers option and click Add Layer. On this screen, we will select the custom layers. Under drop-down, 
let's select the layer and its relevant version and click on add to attach this layer to our function. Let's test this to see if we can import the required libraries. So we will import the psycho PG2 in our function and uh, deploy the updated code to AWS. On success, let's go ahead and test our code. We need to create a test event and save this event. Now, if we click test, our code will run and it shows hello from Lambda message, meaning our code ran successfully. So we are able to import the Psycho PG2 library in this code. If you want to test this, that uh, the layer is providing the Psycho PG2 library, we can go ahead and remove this layer from this function. Let's go ahead and test the function again. This time around, we get an error that Psycho PG2 module is not available. It was the layer that was providing that Psycho PG2 library. I'll go ahead and attach the layer again to this function. And once attached, let's begin coding our ETL script. In this function, let's define few variables. These get the credentials and secrets from the environment variables. Using Psycho PG2 connect method, we establish a connection to the Redshift database. We can define the environment variables under configuration. Under general configuration, locate the environment variables and click it. Here is an overview of the environment variables. I will leave this link in the description below. So it is a key value pair. We define a key and then the value. Using os.environ, we can retrieve the environment variable so back in Lambda code, we can click edit and add environment variables. We can define one for host, port, user, password, and role ARN. I'll define the values and click on save. So back in our code, let's define a copy command in a variable. This is same as the previous video, but we have changed the table name and the S3 object path. Utilizing the F string, we can pass in our local variables such as bucket name and roll error into the copy command. Then we create a cursor from our connection and execute a truncate table command. And then we execute the copy command. We commit both of these to the database with commit. Once we're done, don't forget to close the cursor and the connection. Let's print a message and we are ready to deploy our code. Let's go ahead and deploy our updated code. Before executing the function, let's preview the table. We have the dim sales territory table. We will populate this table using the copy command. So let's head back to Lambda's environment and execute our function. Let's click the test button to execute the function. And it is executing and it returns the final message. Hello from Lambda. So the function execution was success and it took few seconds to complete. Let's go ahead and query the table to see if the table is populated. Our query executed successfully and we have the data in the table. So this is how we can code a Lambda function to move data between services in AWS. We can trigger this Lambda function on different events and you can code almost anything using Python or your favorite coding language. This is all on AWS Lambda. I hope you enjoyed the session. This is all for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.